Paul Stewart reporting here for Fight Scotland and I'm joined here by Robert Whiteford who is now the first Scotsman to be signed up for the UFC. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, obviously it's been a crazy couple of days but I can now call myself a UFC fighter and it feels great. <laughs> it must have been a crazy couple of days, getting phone calls, social media and stuff like that. It's only going to get worse but I arrive on this stuff, the, the worst thing that could happen to the media is give me a licence to say what I want. <laughs> uh, Folk are going to be interested to hear the stuff I've got to say. I don't, I don't uh, hold back on my words. That's for sure. Yes. Uh, so, well, obviously this, this is the big deal for Scottish MA and stuff. But when did you first hear about us? The UFC call. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, when the Manchester card was announced first, uh, I was approached about getting on the card, and they says, "Listen, uh, the card's full. The UFC roster's full. Uh, we're aware who you are. We know who you are." We've We've had you tough, you were so close to getting in tough, uh, would, would it be possible for you to be in standby for the UFC card if anybody gets injured and stuff? So I just jumped at the chance right away, but in the back of your mind, because I was reserved for the tough uh, smashy yeah, series as well, and uh, it never happened, uh, so I was kind of just going through the motions, tra training a little harder, not exerting myself as much as I would in a fight camp. Uh, Last Friday night I was at a Chinese buffet. <laughs> if you ask me, <laughs> if you ask me if I've ever done that a week before a fight, as I know, uh, so I found out I found out six weeks ago, say, and then uh, I kind of gave up hopes. Like a week ago, ten days, you're thinking nobody's going to pull out in a week to go. They shouldn't be. Yeah, they aye. shouldn't be doing anything crazy. Nobody's going to get injured. And then Friday night, I, I got the call and I jumped at the chance. If it was Friday night, this Friday night, and I was fighting Saturday, I would have took it. Honestly, God, I, I, I just wouldn't care. Even if it was like a catchway or something like uh, that. You could have you could have put me in with uh, light heavyweight John John, <laughs> John Jones and uh, it wouldn't have bothered me. Uh, obviously, uh, last year you stated you've been campaigning for this for a long, long time and that. Uh, how? What major factors have brought this success onto you just now? Like in terms of your, uh, like, has it been your friends, your family, your teammates have been helping you out? Uh, M MMA is. Uh, it's a very lonely road to go. I mean, uh, the, the friends that I've lost through MMA, as in from no seeing and socialising time and stuff, yeah. uh, it's pretty hard. So, so for day one, I've, it's kind of off my, my own back. I've done this. I've chased this thing all over the world, man. For my three months into training, I was doing in England training with the Rough House guys. Right away, I seen the level I had to get up. The guys at Leicester Shoot helped me out. And I seen the level I had to get to. From there, I've went to Brazil. I've been to Sweden, I've been to America, you, you yeah, name American it, I, I have yeah. chased this all over the world and the, the people that's helped me more than anything is my teammates, they're there, uh, but basically it's off my own back, but you couldn't do it without your teammates, but I've hunted this thing for day one. Um, with the fight being just been a week's notice, how have you been keeping yourself in preparation for this fight? In terms, of, have you been keeping yourself like training, like constantly since your last fight with Paul Reed back at SFC? Uh, I train every day. It, it doesn't matter if I've got a fight coming up or I've not got a fight coming up. I, I'm training. I'm training hard. I'm training three times, twice a day. Sometimes, uh, so it doesn't really matter. It, the only thing it would change with a fight coming up was intensity training. Yeah. And, yeah. and obviously, my diet. I wouldn't have been at Chinese buffet long <laughs> last Friday night. Uh, but, but. That's the only thing that changes. I still just train as hard as it. It's a lifestyle for me. It's not that I choose to tell my friends or my fighter that I choose to tell nobody I'm a fighter. If anybody wants to see when I'm out, it's in the gym or I'm out running in the roads and stuff or I'm at my house training. There's no way, there's no, no describing it really. Um, you're facing Jimmy Hetty's uh, at Manchester next week. He's, a, he's got a similar background to you in terms of judo and, and his record's pretty much identical, 10 and 1. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you know more about him and uh, what threat does he propose to you? <sighs> to be honest, it, it, it doesn't matter who they put in front of me, the outcome's going to be the same. It, I'm, I'm going in there not to scrap. Fuck yep. I'm, I'm not here to fuck about. <laughs> I, I'm going in there to scrap. It, it, it does not matter who it is in front of me or, or what they possess. Uh, not, not to diminish uh, Jimmy's skills yeah. because... Uh, the last time I watched him fought was a year ago, he fought in Am Pham. Uh, oh, uh, he fought Mar Marcus Brimage as well. And uh, uh, when it, the only time I've seen him is in the Nam Pham fight. Yeah. And uh, i seen his skills and I, I thought, 
that's uh, pretty identical to the stuff that I use. Uh, uh, and then I actually came in and stole some of my stuff and I was teaching it in the grip house on uh, the Monday morning after watching them at the weekend. And uh, so, so the styles are the styles are basically identical. Uh, well, so in terms of that, how would you see the prediction of this fight then? If, if uh, Jimmy Hayes walks on to my right hand, he's in trouble. <laughs> that, that's enough said that's, then. That's enough said. Um, if you've been the first Scotsman, uh, what can you tell us about the the UFC contract? Is it like a one fight deal or is it? I've got a four fight deal for the UFC. Fantastic, mate! That's uh, brilliant. So even though it's a short notice fight, but the contract was always there. I just had to get my chance to get it. Uh, so it's not like a, uh, that you've got a week's fight and then we'll talk about it. Wait for it. It's like we want you in the UFC. We've been trying to get you in for a while. I your your I division's stacked. I take it it's just that moment of time till someone just like. Until you get your yeah, chance and yeah. you take it. Uh, opportunity doesn't knock twice, and I'm definitely not going to try to shut the door on that. Yeah, I won't, I won't keep you here for any much longer than that, today, but in terms of how how's your, your friends and family received the use, and, and your, especially your teammates, your teammates must be over the moon for you. Nobody could bear the moon more than me. <laughs> uh, I'm a, I was actually close to tears when I heard that. It was like all my ambitions for, for day one since I started fighting to, was to get to the UFC. I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to say I just thought about fighting on local shows. I always had bigger ambitions and the, the, the competitiveness inside me, I always want to win everything, but whether it's playing you at dominoes or what, I want to win. <laughs> then when you start fighting, yeah. you realise you need to be a wee bit humble because you can't always win. Yeah. You know, you've, you've got to be a wee bit humble with it. But now I've got to the, the place where I want to be, the UFC, and nobody can, nobody can deny how I've got here. I, I've, I'm not one of the fighters that of my friends, friends with this guy, he knows you or this. I've worked my ass off to get here. Like, there's no denying how I've got here. Looking back at your career um, so far, what would you say was the most pinnacle point that it's, it's took you up to that next level? Probably Martin Svensson fight. And I bingoed him in 43 seconds. That's, yeah, I, I would have to agree with you on that one. That's but. That that was only yeah. because of the the type of opponent it was, but I've been in some scraps with guys for Newcastle and in England and yeah, stuff. Yeah, the, the Carl Fawcett fight. The Carl was... Fawcett fight, the Liam James fight. I mean, I've been in fucking battles with these guys, uh, but the the thing it was Martin Swenson, he was just highly regarded in Europe and stuff. He was top ten ranked, and I was underdog. Every fight I've been in, I've been an underdog. So to, to to just go and prove to people what I'm capable of. Especially with a guy like that, and it made people stand on and say, wait a minute here, yeah, we've got something in our hands here. Well, if this now being the UFC, there's going to be a lot of publicity, you know. Um, how's the, the fans who are going to be watching this, how, how are they going to view your fight? They're going to be able to catch you on Facebook prelims. Uh, uh, Facebook prelims. The UFC page. If you've not got BT Sport, you maybe catch you on there as well. Uh, uh, it could be captured as a like, featured bout. Definitely, when I knock them out, I'll be catching that 50 grand as well. You've heard it here, folks. Um, is there anyone you would like to thank? Uh, sponsors, teammates, family, anybody? I'd like to thank uh, one of my long-time friends, Colin Baxter. He's, he was very pivotal in me getting here today. Amazing talent. And I always thought if I could stick with him and take a wee small piece of his talent, that I could do something good with it. So I'd, I'd like to thank him and the rest of my teammates, managers, anybody that's put up with me to get here. So... Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks again, man. Thanks very much. I wish you all the best. Cheers. Next week, man. Thank you.